From earlier predictions of oil hitting $200 a barrel, prices plunged to their lowest in 17 months on Friday, losing more than half their value. Who's responsible for the latest drop in oil prices? Is it related to the current financial crisis? And what will the impact be? This is Inside Story. Hello, I'm Lauren Taylor. Only three months ago, oil prices hit a record high of $147 a barrel. That was bad news for consumers, but good for petroleum exporting countries. Now things have turned upside down. Within the past few weeks, oil prices have plummeted to about half of what they were in July. Hardly anyone would have predicted such a sudden decline, but the oil market is one of the most capricious. It's not just determined by supply and demand, but also by the traders' perception of supply and demand. The oil price is a result of economic factors, but also political ones. The price went up when an attack on Iran seemed likely, and it now goes down because the Bush era is approaching its end and the Gulf region currently seems a little more stable. But there's also the purely financial side. The oil market also seems affected by the global financial crisis. But what do plunging oil prices actually mean? Do they indicate the beginning of a global recession? Or is the market so volatile that the current decline is normal after months of record highs? Well, joining us now are our guests in Paris, Francis Perrin, he's editorial manager at Arab Oil and Gas magazine. In Dubai, we're joined by Piyush Matur, who is uh, managing director for the Middle East, North Africa and Pakistan at the Nielsen Company. That's a leading market information company. And in Washington, D.C., Flint Leverett, he's director of the Geopolitics of Energy Initiative at the New America Foundation. That's a non-profit policy think tank. If I could go to Paris first of all and uh, Francis Perrin, uh, the sudden oil price drop, is it a symptom of the global financial crisis? Yes, definitely. There are very close links between the financial and economic crisis and the sudden and very strong fall in oil prices. And there are at least three main links. First, a financial crisis means more difficult access to credit. And when it's more difficult to have credit, it's more difficult to buy oil and or to speculate on oil and on other commodities, of course. Economic crisis, second, means a um, lower uh, rate of growth in world oil demand. And in several cases, a fall in oil demand. It's the case in OECD countries, especially the United States, which is by far the largest oil consumer in the world. And uh, when we see the latest figures coming from the U.S. Department of Energy, we see that in September, U.S. oil demand fell by 9%, which is very, very significant. Uh, the third uh, main factor, the third main link, is the fact that in a crisis uh, with uh, such a scale uh, and intensity, there is from the investors a flight to safety and to security. It means that people will invest in treasury bills, uh, will invest in cash and so on, but will um, uh, stay away from commodities in general and from oil in particular, because commodities are risky investments. And we must also add the uh, strength of the dollar vis-à-vis -vis the euro. And we know for some time that there is often an inverse relationship between uh, the, um, uh, the, the uh, rate of the dollar and the price of uh, oil on oil markets. OK, if I could bring in, um, in Washington, uh, Flint Leverett. I mean, briefly was touched on there the issue of speculators. At the time when the prices shot up, a lot of people wanted to blame the speculators and others said, no, no, it's not the speculators, it's simply supply and demand. What do you think it is now, now that the prices have shot down? Well, you know, I'm struck thinking back a few months ago when I was last in Saudi Arabia, and uh, the Saudis have for some time had an argument that the fundamentals of the market would suggest that the price of oil should be somewhere in the range of 80 to 90 dollars a barrel, and that anything above that in the Saudi view was the result of speculation. Um, that probably was a bit of an exaggeration, but, you know, We've now had all of this speculative pressure taken out of the oil market. If anything, the speculative pressure, such as it is, is now um, all on the downside, expecting still lower prices. And I suspect that in the end, we probably are going to have prices stabilize probably somewhere around, um, around $80 a barrel. 
I, I mean, all of the things that my colleague in Paris said about diminished demand are true, but uh, still, you know, 60, 70, 80 dollar barrel oil is significantly more expensive than what we've been used to historically over the last 20 years. Okay, let me bring in uh, Piyush Matur. Uh, who stands to gain, uh, um, presumably consumers stand to gain at least uh, from lower prices? Lorraine, um, you know, if, if I say that the world was a different place to live 40 days ago, I might sound a bit cliched. Um, 40 days ago, consumers were actually battling high fuel and food prices, and they were changing their habits. They started combining their shopping trips. They started staying indoors. They, they didn't actually want to go outdoors. And some of the industries that did well were uh, in, in indoor entertainment. Uh, in, in that scenario, um, you know, the lifestyles changed. Now what we see with fuel and food prices coming down, but we are in midst of a major financial turmoil. And hence, uh, you know, the consumers are gaining from one side from the fuel, uh, fuel and food prices coming down, but on the other side, they're really grappling with the situation that we see today. We did a survey recently, about three weeks ago, uh, on Consumer Confidence Index globally in 52 countries, and we found that the consumer confidence was the lowest ever. We, we found that 53% uh, of the consumers globally feel that there, there's going to be a deep recession for the next 12 months. So they're not you know, very optimistic at this point, and they're probably buckling their seat belts for a rocky ride. Uh, Flint Leverett, if I just bring you back in, I mean, that in some ways that people might have assumed that a lower oil price might kickstart the economy and that people can go out and spend. But if that if that's the case that they're not actually in t inclined to spend, then it could. Uh, what what do, you, do you think the impact will be? Well, I, as I said, you know, keep in mind, even if if say the price of oil is only seventy dollars a barrel compared to the prices that Western economies got used to during the nineteen eighties, the nineteen nineties the very early years of, of this decade, that still is a quite high oil price. It's true that having the oil price come down as much as it has over the last few months uh, should have a stimulative effect on, on Western economies, but these economies are dealing with a whole host of problems. High energy prices was only one, and so I think it probably is going to take some period of time for uh, Western economies to work through their current difficulties and start growing again. Just staying with you, if you could, can you explain what the impact of the dollar rate uh, is? It was mentioned briefly a moment ago. How much of an impact does that have on, on oil prices? Well, the, the relationship is there because uh, oil is typically priced and traded in, in dollars. And so if the um, value of the dollar on international currency markets goes down, uh, then oil producers, in effect, need a higher price denominated in dollars in order to be able to earn uh, the return that they think is, is indicated by, by fundamentals. That's what drives the relationship. And it is, there are statistical studies showing that it is a pretty direct a uh, relationship of you know x percentage fall in the value of the dollar correlating with a rather comparable uh, increase in the price of oil. Uh, Francis Perrin, could I bring you back in? I mean, after the, all this financial crisis, we've seen governments uh, actually talking about needing to help, you know revamp the whole financial system. What about the trading in oil? Does that is that due a revamp as well, or do you think it'll stay the way it is? Uh, we certainly need some serious uh, thinking about this. Um, um, there is much progress to do in terms of um, more transparency, uh, in terms of uh, regulation, in terms of um, um, players' responsibility, and so on. Um, uh, several people within the oil business will probably tell you that all is perfect and that there is nothing more to change. Uh, I would uh, disagree with them. Um, I think there is much progress to do, probably less than in the financial sphere. It, I think it's clear uh, and it's an uh, understatement, but uh, certainly uh, 
uh, as far as some uh, trades are concerned. And here I am not referring to the so-called futures markets, uh, which are organized markets, for instance, the NYMEX, the New York Mercantile Exchange, or uh, in uh, New York, of course, or ECA Futures in London. But um, there, there are some gray zones uh, within um, uh, oil transactions. And I think that a uh, good look at uh, all this stuff uh, would be certainly something uh, useful and interesting. Um, Piyush Matur, if you can come back to the consumer end of it again, when you talk to people and you know what their views are, do uh, consumers now expect the oil companies really to pass on uh, any cuts in the oil price so that they're actually paying less at the pump? Yes, I, I think that expectation is, is there by the consumers. I, I just wanted to add in a comment on the fuel efficiency part and, and the consumption going down. I think in the 80s and 90s, um, when the you know fuel prices went down uh, and the consumption went up, but I think in today's world, the consumers are much more climate conscious. Uh, they're, they're conscious about the change in climate that's, that's happening, and they've actually changed their lifestyles. They um, now are buying smaller cars. In fact, uh, you, you know, there's a, there's a trend towards uh, using bicycles in, in Europe. Uh, people are getting much more fuel efficient. So even though the prices might come down, we may not see the consumption going up to that extent. OK, let's uh, take a quick break now. And uh, when we come back, we'll be asking, should the oil exporting countries coordinate to reduce production at this crucial time? Do stay with us.